Hi, Simon Chapel here. I'm the Quit Alcohol Coach, and as always, I'm here to help you smash your sobriety. I share tips, tactics, and advice for anyone who wants to change their relationship with alcohol. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's at least two new videos every week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and bonus videos in between. So I'm here to help ensure that if you want to quit drinking and change the way that alcohol features in your life, let's do that. Let's absolutely do that together. Now today I'm going to talk about the seven biggest mistakes that people make when they quit drinking. I tried to quit so many times. I kept finding myself back at day one over and over again. I was drinking up to three bottles of red wine every single day for over 20 years often with beer or spirits on top and I felt like I was in a trap a place where I could never break free from drinking but I did and I'm going to share the mistakes that I hear from the people I coach with that keep sending them back to day one that keeps putting them down the rabbit hole so that you don't make those same mistakes and make sure you stay right the way through to number seven because for me that one was my favorite so here we go seven biggest mistakes that people make when they try and stop drinking the first one it sounds simple but when you quit you need to make sure you get to at least seven to ten days alcohol free lots of people get to the third or fourth day and experience discomfort cravings a really strong urge to drink and it overwhelms them they think that alcohol is the only solution and they go back to day one now here's the thing after seven to ten days our mental toughness massively increases by around 60 to 70%. We're feeling a lot calmer, the urges to drink aren't as strong, the cravings aren't quite so overwhelming, but we often don't allow ourselves to get to that place. So you need to try and dig deep. You need to stand in the storm. And there's other videos on my YouTube channel here that will show you how to do that with tactics and practical tips to ensure that you get through that difficult period. But if we're going to just get to day three and day four and go back to the start, we're actually doing the worst part of this over and over again. The toughest bit, without doubt, ask anybody who's quit drinking who was a previously a heavy drinker, and they will tell you that the worst part is the first week. Imagine if you joined the Navy SEALs and they put you on the toughest training course possible. And over the first week, you had to go through muddy, boggy ditches, you had to climb over seven foot obstacles, crawl under barbed wire, and it's so, so tough. You give up halfway through, you go back to the beginning, and you start again. You do it again, and it just feels so tough. You're never going to get to the finish. You go back, you start again. That's what I was doing over and over again, back to day one, back to day one. Yet the fact of the matter is, after a week, 10 days, the obstacle course actually ends. The barbed wire's gone. The seven foot walls aren't around anymore. It's more of a gentle, steady route march rather than a tough barbed wire clad obstacle course. But we don't feel that at the time. When we're in the middle of climbing over that seven foot wall and our hands are bleeding and feeling blistered and we just can't continue, we give up and we go back to the start. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The first week can be tough. But hanging on in there and continuing to put one foot in front of the other really is so worthwhile because that short period of discomfort is so worth it for all the gifts that lay on the other side. So dig deep, hold firm and stand in the storm. Make sure you learn that tactic because that is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making is just thinking this is too hard. It's going to be like this forever and it really isn't worth it. And alcohol is the only solution. It's the only thing that's going to make me feel better. No, alcohol is what's going to make you feel worse. You might have read The Sober Diaries by Claire Pooley and she does the analogy of an obstacle course in that. If you haven't read it, just Google it because it's 
actually a blog post on her website and it's a brilliant piece. It's similar to what I just described, but she writes it way better than I say it. The second big mistake that people make is quitting alcohol without any form of strategy or tactics. And when I talk about tactics, what I mean is knowing how to handle anything that might come up for you. So when I quit, I felt like I was being hit by cravings every few minutes, certainly over the first couple of days. Imagine I was standing on a beach and there were big waves coming in and they were crashing into me. That was a craving. And then they would go out and then crash. They would come back in again. And it felt like it would go on all day. And of course, the later in the day it got, the closer to the time that I used to drink, the more intense those cravings got. But when I successfully quit, I made sure I had tactics to deal with them. Now, those tactics are wide and varying. You might have heard me talking about a sober toolbox, which is your own bespoke what kit of tactics that work for you. And tactics in sobriety are a little bit like trying on pairs of shoes in a shoe shop. You know, they're not all going to fit. They're not all going to be right for you. But some of them will fit perfectly. So you need to make sure you get out there explore all the different tactics and write down the ones that absolutely do work for you. The ones that enable you to be able to sit through a craving without giving in and taking a drink. The ones that allow you to calm your mind down when you're feeling anxious. The tactics that stop you telling stories to yourself. That allow you to manage feelings of fear that you're never going to do it because you've not been able to quit the last 20 times you tried. Well, this time it can be different. If you plan, if you have a strategy and if you have tactics, you're going to do it. You're going to smash it. It's like anything. If I gave you a violin and asked you to learn how to play it and you didn't do any research, you didn't learn how, you didn't have a tutor, you didn't watch videos like this on YouTube, you're probably never going to get a tune out of it. You'll probably break the strings and smash it against the wall. Whereas if you put the work in and learn what you're doing, it's like learning a new skill. The more you invest in this, the more you're going to get out of it and the more you're going to enjoy it. Because this all sounds kind of depressing, but believe me, on the other side of that initial difficult period, period is the most amazing life-changing thing that you can do and you will experience some wonderful gifts and I don't just mean external changes to your face your body darkness under your eyes things like that internal you change as a person in such a powerful and positive way and believe me you might have heard it from lots and lots of other people but they can't all be lying I never hear anybody complaining about being sober I only hear people complaining who are still drinking the third biggest mistake that people make is failing to fill the time that they used to drink when I quit I added up how many hours per week I was drinking it was 25 to 30 hours a week. That's a lot of time. So I made sure I had a plan. I found new hobbies. I got out into the big wide world and did the things that lit me up, the stuff that was my passion. And it can be kind of hard when someone says to you, well, what's your passion? What lights you up? It's difficult, isn't it, to actually think about that, especially when we've been drinking regularly and heavily Alcohol steals the joy from all the normal things in life, so nothing really lights us up. So I had to think back to when I was younger. What was it then that I really enjoyed doing? Maybe it was arts and crafts. Maybe it was something musical, learning languages. It could be anything. Think about the things that when you did them in the past, you lost track of time because you loved doing them so, so much. They're the things that light you up. They're your passions. Take a moment to look at what your core values are as a person. Refine a list of core values down to maybe five or six and look at where those values are actually being fulfilled in your life. Or worse, are those values being opposed? And what I mean by that is one of my values as a person is honesty. Yet I used to work in a job that involved pressure selling and sometimes bending the truth to get the deal. Now that flies in the face of honesty. No wonder I hated the job so much, yet I didn't realise this until I looked at my values and I actually dug into really what was opposing them, what was causing me discomfort in my life. So as well as finding things to do with your time and all the extra time you're going to have on your hands, which is an awesome thing by the way, make sure you look at your values and where they're being met. 
And if you've got a partner, a really awesome thing you can do is look at each other's values and how you're both fulfilling each other's values too. And a great game to play is to actually write down what you think each other's values are. I guarantee you'll get it completely wrong because I did when I went through that same practice. But get out there into the big wide world. When we quit, we definitely feel more energy, more motivation to do things. You don't want to be going to boozy events and places where everything is revolving around alcohol. I started to get much more into my fitness. I joined a boot camp where I made loads of new friends. Now, sure, some of those people drink. That's fine. But the whole thing wasn't about alcohol. It was about fitness. So drinking wasn't even on the agenda. So look for classes. Reconnect with people that you might not have connected with in a long time meetups.com is an amazing website where you can find local events and meetups with people who share the same interests as you. There's Facebook groups of just about everything, whether you like pottery, martial arts, artwork, whatever it might be. You know, there's something for everybody. The key in all of this is actually understanding and knowing what your passion is. And trust me, that really does tie in with your values as an individual. The fourth biggest mistake that people make when they quit drinking is that they tell themselves stories about what's going to happen. Now, we were just talking about getting bored. Believe me, the devil makes work for idle hands. And that is so true. So keeping your hands busy and not allowing yourself to get bored so you're sat around thinking, oh, I'm going to have a drink is really, really important. But equally important is, and especially if you're sitting around bored, is not telling yourself fake stories about the future. It can be so easy to do. You might quit drinking and you might think, well, I've tried to quit so many times in the past. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to succeed. But that you don't know that. This time should be different. This time you've done your research. You've got a tactics. You've got a strategy. You maybe got a coach. You might have joined a program like my own quick drinking program so that you've got a structure in what you're doing. Telling ourselves stories often leads to us actually meeting our own negative expectation. Now, that can't be a great thing. Think about a time when you've gone to a party in the past and before you've gone, you've already decided that it's going to be boring. It's going to be crap. You don't like anybody there. You don't even want to go. What happens? You have a bad time. Now think of a time when you've been to a party or an event and you were really excited about it. You were looking forward to it. You were going to have a great time. What happened? You probably had a great time. Now, I'm sure there's exceptions to that rule, but you understand what I'm talking about. The principle of what you expect is often what you get in anything. So make sure that when you find yourself telling stories in your head, you catch yourself doing it and you actually look at the truth around the statements that you're saying. Is it really true that you're going to fail this time because you failed a 100 times in the past? And add the word but on the end of any full story statements. I'm not going to su succeed this time because I failed 50 times in the past, but I'm working on that. But I'm putting some time into really doing it properly this time around. So adding the word but can be a great way to change a, a false story that we tell ourselves. But better still is to write a new story. Actually write it down. And why is it different? Why is it different this time? Analyse the statements that you're making and break them down and write out a new statement. So... Yes, I've failed 50 times in the past, but this time's going to be different because I've joined a program. I've got a strategy. I've got tactics. I'm feeling confident and I'm feeling determined. And talking of determination, write down a time in your life when you were really determined to do something. It could be moving house, having a baby, changing careers, moving cities. Something that you decided to do and nothing was going to get in your way. I bet there's something, even if you're shaking your head saying, well, I've never done anything like that. Maybe you've run a marathon or a half marathon. Who knows? But I bet there's something and nothing was going to stop you. Nothing was going to get in your way, no matter what. Well, that tells me that you've got that determination inside of you, that nothing's going to stop me determination. And when you apply that to quitting drinking, 
it can feel like a superpower. You channel that in there. You make sobriety your new obsession, your new determination. Treat it like your new exciting hobby and do get excited about what you're doing. You see me getting excited about it and that's because it changed my life and has become my new passion. I'm totally passionate about sobriety and helping other people quit drinking. Definitely think about that. Your story should be, I'm changing my life. This is a powerful experience. It's going to be a journey of self-discovery. I'm going to learn things about myself and my life is going to change for the absolute best. How can you not get excited about that? Yes, there's a bit of discomfort at the start, but with the right tactics and the right tools, you're going to learn to get through that. And do check out the other videos on my channel and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of those tactics because they really are important. The fifth biggest mistake that people make is hanging on to false beliefs. Beliefs. I've seen people who've quit drinking for decent amounts of time and then in a moment they've gone back to drinking because they still believed that alcohol had some kind of positive benefit. Now the fact is alcohol has no positive benefits and again there's videos all over my channel that will give you the facts about that. It's bad for every element of your body from your hair and look what it did to mine right down to the nails on your toes it can make them more brittle and everything in between it causes cancer it causes heart problems liver problems brain issues mental health issues the list is absolutely endless yet it can be so easy to credit alcohol with things like it helps me relax it makes me have fun it allows me to de-stress to detach it's all completely fake. I believed all of those things. Alcohol is one big illusion. I'll give you an example of that. And if you nod your head at this, I'll, I'll have a little smile on your face when you do. I used to get a bottle of wine out of the cupboard at the end of the day. I'd always make sure there were at least two or three bottles in the cupboard, otherwise I'd be panicking and I'd be edgy. When I got the bottle of wine out of the cupboard, and sometimes when I even bought the bottle of wine, I'd feel a sense of relaxation wash over me, almost a euphoria. It was a little bit like the feeling you get after the first sip of taking a drink. Yet I hadn't drunk any of the substance. This was alcohol playing with my mind. And if that's happened to you, and it happens to a lot of people, that is proof that alcohol is one big illusion and it plays tricks with our mind. The fact is we only get a very brief amount of relaxation or that euphoric feeling that comes maybe for half an hour or so after the first drink as chemicals are released in our brain that make us feel pleasure. After that it is a downhill slippery slope. Depressant chemicals are released to try and balance the dopamine, the um, endorphins that have been released our brain releases dynorphin, which is a depressant. You can look it up online. And then it's one big up and down roller coaster of emotions and uncomfortable feelings. Often we wake up in the morning with heightened anxiety. We have hangovers. We argue with people. We carry out regrettable behavior. My God, I did so much of that. You know, so how can any of that be relaxing, can be fun, can be de-stressing? Yeah, maybe for half an hour, but most of those beliefs you might still be hanging on to are untrue and you need to pull apart your beliefs. You need to smash them down and destroy them. That's how you find complete freedom from drinking. There's other videos on my channel that will teach you how to destroy your beliefs. And once you've destroyed your beliefs, it's like removing obstacles out of your own way and it is absolutely incredible. It's empowering, it's game changing. You've got to get into your beliefs. If after you've quit, you still feel like you're hanging on to beliefs that alcohol has some benefit, you need to go back and work on them. You need to really put them to bed so that you absolutely don't have any limiting beliefs or beliefs that hold you back. I can't emphasize this one enough. Destroy your beliefs and you will find freedom. Any beliefs that hold you back or limit you could potentially draw you back to drinking. And none of us want that. We want to be free. So that putting in that work on your beliefs is absolutely fundamental. And I really would urge you to do that. No matter how long you've been alcohol free, stop right now and look at what your beliefs are. Do you still think alcohol has some value, some benefit? If so, destroy that, get into it, pull the belief apart. Like a defense and a prosecution arguing for the truth around the belief. 
and then form a new healthy belief statement. There's a lot more to it than that. As I say, there's other videos that will talk you through the entire process so you can unlock your beliefs and break them down and form new beliefs that aren't gonna limit you. They're gonna allow you to be your best self. And that's so important. That's what we wanna be, right? The sixth biggest mistake that people make when they quit drinking is in the early days visiting their old haunts, the places that they used to go when they drank. Often that can be a pub or clubs where alcohol is the centre of attention. And that really is a mistake. The first couple of months after I quit, I did not go anywhere where I thought alcohol was going to be all around me, where people might push me to drink, where I might be tempted to drink. I stayed away. I swapped it for healthy activities. I'd take my son to the movies or we'd go bowling or I'd go out on a date night with my wife for a meal. But I didn't go to pubs. I didn't go out with friends who our relationships were just based around drinking. I stayed away from that stuff. If you end up going to the pub, you're gonna be sat there, you're gonna feel bored, you're gonna be tempted to drink. It's gonna feel difficult, like you're the one who's missing out. And by the way, you're not missing out on anything. It's only that first week or two where you feel some pretty heavy discomfort where you might feel like that. So do yourself a favor, stay away from those places. Make a freedom plan and write down what you're gonna do instead. You're gonna have a lot of time on your hands and that's a really awesome thing, but you don't wanna be going to those old places where you used to go where alcohol was the center of the show and you're going to feel that urge to drink trust me if you sit in a pub a week after you've quit drinking you're going to feel like i want a drink i need a drink it's like sitting in a restaurant and being hungry how long are you going to sit there for before you order food eventually you're going to want something to eat so stay away and Eat at home. You know, don't do that. I don't mean drink at home by saying that. I just mean stay away in the places where alcohol is going to tempt you. And you need to make sure you set up your environment correctly. So if you are at home, try and not have alcohol in the house. Set boundaries with your partner around what you're okay with. So I used to drink red wine. And when I quit, I asked my wife, I said, I really need you to help me with this. I'm not preaching to you. I'm not judging you because she still drank moderately at that time. I'm not sort of pu pushing my values on you or telling you to do anything, but I really would love it if we didn't have red wine in the house. And she was absolutely fine with that. And most partners will be. If they love you and they're supporting you, they're going to be okay with that. So make sure you set your environment up for success. Some people I know even give their debit and credit cards to their partners and make sure they've got no cash for the first couple of weeks just to keep themselves safe. So whatever you need to do, and again, I go into more depth about how you can set your environment up for success in some of my other videos, particularly the one around the first week of quitting drinking. That will really help you if you wanna know how to really get set for success. Okay, we've got to number seven, the biggest mistake that people make when they quit. And this ties in with a couple of the others around going back to day one and telling ourselves stories. There is so much power in knowing that that discomfort passes and we can forget. It's a big mistake. We, we forget that actually if I sit with a craving, it will probably only last 10 or 15 minutes and I will come out the other side of it. Knowing that everything passes, unfortunately, even good stuff in life passes, everything passes. It's a fact. You may have heard the phrase, this too shall pass. It's true for everything in life. It all passes. And cravings and discomfort when you quit drinking, they pass. There were times when I had some really tough cravings in the early days and I would take myself off to bed if it was early evening and wake up in the morning feeling refreshed and ready to go again. The more I sat with the cravings, the more they would pass. Often I would go and meditate or I would go for a run. Sometimes it was really, really challenging, but I stuck with it. I dug my heels in. And every time I sat through a, a craving, I claimed back some of my power. Each time they got weaker. The first time I sat with one was challenging. It was tough. But I knew that if I got through that, I would know I could do it in the future. And a lot of us fall at that first hurdle. We feel a craving. We just think this is too hard. Alcohol is the only solution. We then give the credit to alcohol for actually 
helping us kind of heal and easing our pain, which is complete BS. And we're back down the rabbit hole. We're back drinking again. We're back to day one. Whereas if we can sit through that discomfort every time we do it, it weakens and we claim back power every time. So I want you to do that. I want you to stand in the storm and know that you can get through it. Know that you do always come out the other side of it, no matter what it takes. And this comes back to making sure you've got tactics for dealing with it, tactics for knowing how to get through it with the least amount of discomfort. And most importantly, knowing that there's something so wonderful on the other side. I kind of hate making these sort of videos because it sounds like everything's doom and gloom. It's really not. I just want you to get through the first week or two and hear you saying to me, my God, I'm on my second week sober and I'm feeling damn good. My mood has changed. I'm feeling happier. This was so worth doing. Yeah, a few days of discomfort. And now, wow, my life is starting to change. It suddenly feels like the sun has burst through the dark, cloudy skies that have been hanging over me for years and years. And I'm smiling again. That was what happened to me. Alcohol stole my smile. My son, oh, you might have watched the video I did with my son where he talked about having a dad who was addicted to alcohol and what it's like having a sober dad now. He said to me, I never used to smile. I never used to laugh. He said I was dead inside. Can you believe that? My son said that. But it was true. He was only speaking the truth and kids do that, right? I'm also going to give you a bonus tactic today. And I think this is really important and it's something I've only really looked at over the last few months. And that is to draw a timeline of your life. So many people who I do one-to-one -one coaching with or group coaching in my program have experienced trauma as a child or trauma as an adult or they've had huge events in their life that have sent them down a path where they've self-medicated with alcohol to numb the pain. Yet we often forget, we don't join up the dots and realise that, oh wow, yeah, that, that moment, that was where it all started to go off track. That was what sent me off the rails. I talked about it on my recent video that came out a few days ago about how I suffered sexual abuse when I was a child, how my father walked out on my mum and I when I was two years old. And I've actually been told by people who know things that that left me with childhood PTSD. I didn't know it at the time. Not long after the sexual abuse when I was around 13, I was turning to drugs. I started drinking. I didn't join up the dots. But when I drew a timeline of my life with the pivotal moments and the kind of the age that I was at when I did them, I just drew a line and I put dots on it and wrote next to it what it was that had happened I quickly realized that it was these pivotal moments that had turned me down that path it had sent me down there and doing that made me feel like I knew something it kind of was like a missing piece in a jigsaw and I felt quite good about that that I joined these dots up and if you've suffered trauma watch my other video about how I dealt with that there's a few tips in there and things you can do if you've experienced trauma in your life it's something I'm going to be talking more about as I go forward um, but trauma plays a really big part for so so many people sometimes we don't even realize it's trauma you know, you might think you hear the word trauma and you think well I've not been sexually abused or nobody's ever beaten me up so I've not suffered trauma there can be other things you might have had someone in your life who was a narcissist someone who was controlling you mentally trauma comes in many many shapes and sizes and in almost every case there is something laying in the past that had led us to drink I often speak to people who have issues with self-esteem and confidence and it all comes from somewhere maybe you were bullied at school when you were younger they, they, dig deep look at your timeline and when you join up the dots believe me you suddenly think yeah that's a missing piece in my jigsaw and it helps you grow stronger a bit like after I quit drinking and I was diagnosed with adult ADHD why they call it adult ADHD I don't know because I had it when I was a kid but I didn't just didn't know it and that felt good knowing that I had ADHD it explained a lot of things to me it made me understand and when we understand we feel better about things so do do that and see what comes up on your own timeline and if you discover trauma then you can take some steps to heal it properly whereas if you just continue without looking back 
I don't, we don't want to dwell on the past, and I'm not saying churn up old trauma, but if we don't look back at it, we might never join up the dots, and you may never heal something that needs work, that needs you to invest time in it. And the best place to deal with those things is after you've quit drinking, when your mind has stabilised, when you're feeling grounded, calm, rational. It's the perfect place to deal with this stuff. So get it out into the light. Don't be afraid of what you might find. Approach it with excitement, a sense of discovery about what you're going to unravel about yourself. Like I said at the beginning, it's a journey of self-discovery. And believe me, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. And I want that for you too. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. There's new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. If you want to quit drinking, this is the channel to follow. And also, if you want to try my quit drinking program, you can do that totally free for 14 days to check it out. See if it's good for you. See if it's a good fit. You don't have to pay anything. I'm pretty confident it will help you change your life, especially if you've been struggling and keep going back to day one, because it will give you structure, it will give you tactics, and it will give you all the support you need. And until the next video, I will see you all soon.